Okay, so today we are going to talk about temperature, heat, and thermal energy. We're going to start off good old unit 6 with the Conceptual Physics book, chapter 21. So you can go ahead and take a look at your Conceptual Physics book and follow up for those materials by reading it just, uh, I think it's like three pages, four pages. But here we go. So please consider the following. We have this, um, Define temperature in terms of kinetic energy, temperature in terms of kinetic energy. And then we want to describe the three common temperature scales, Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin, with respect to freezing slash melting and boiling points of water, it says of water, and absolute zero. So here we go. So I'm going to start off with um, temperature. And so temperature is the idea. Temperature itself is the idea that um, molecules themselves have... Um, a vibrational quality to them that we call temperature. And so we're going to, um, temperature is actually the letter T, and it's the measurement of molecular kinetic energy. It's the measurement of molecular kinetic energy. And uh, that's, what, that's what temperature is. The molecules will vibrate, and the faster they vibrate, the hotter they are, and the slower they vibrate, the colder they are. And so... Let's look how this um, relates to the thermometer, because what people realize is that when an object like alcohol, before it was mercury, but mercury is poisonous, so we don't really use mercury in thermometers as much anymore. But, but, but an object like alcohol that expands a lot when heats and cools, um, we can use those as, um, as, as a way to measure temperature change because they expand. And so... Why are they expanding? Why are they contracting? Well, let's think about this a little bit. If I got some water and I plop some ice cubes in there, and the molecules would slow down, right? And so when the molecules slow down, if I put the, if I put the, um, the alcohol thermometer in there, it's going to cause it to shrink, ooh, no, shrink down to this level right here. And what I'm going to do, be, this is the first people that actually made um, – thermometers would have done it just like this. Uh, this guy, Andrew Celsius and Daniel Fahrenheit had the same idea. And so they were measuring this stuff. They said, hey, I'm going to put a little mark on the side of the, of the test tube. And I'm right there, beep, I put a little mark on the side of the test tube. And I'm going to call that the freezing point. And Fahrenheit did the same thing. And then he said, okay, I'm going to take a, I'm going to put, um, I'm going to heat it up. I'm going to put a flame under here. I'm going to melt all the ice. And it's going to cause the water to um, to um, speed up the molecular kinetic energy. And so the, the water molecules will vibrate more. And as they vibrate, the water actually will turn into a gas. And it's that's what boiling is. It turns into a gas and it leaves. That steam is very hot. And the water water level begins to go down. The steam goes out because the water molecules are vibrating so fast that they that they leave the substance. And so, if you have the thermometer in there, it causes the molecules of alcohol to also begin to expand. And as they expand, it takes you up to there, and that's the boiling point. And so, you make another mark there. So Celsius said, "Okay, I'm using fresh water, and fresh water." It boils at this point, and he called this 100 degrees Celsius. Daniel Fahrenheit used um, seawater, um, and so um, his numbers are different. I don't think that's exactly um, all the details of what Fahrenheit did. I didn't really research too much about Fahrenheit because we don't really use him in physics. Um, but Celsius did use fresh water, and he called that first mark 100 degrees Celsius. And then when he had it, in the ice and it shrunk down, he decided to call that zero degrees Celsius. And so in science, it's a really good scale for us because it's zero, it's 100 degrees between freezing and boiling. And I think uh, Fahrenheit used um, like body temperature for 100 because where our human bodies are about 100 and I think you use freezing water um, for the for the freezing temperature. Um, but salt water freezes at a much lower temperature. So I think that's what he did anyways. So that's about 32 degrees Fahrenheit in that scale. So if you look at between that scale, there's not 100 degrees here between there. And we just simply don't use Fahrenheit. Um, in physics, we can use a Celsius scale 
or we can use the Kelvin scale. And this we'll talk about the scale, Kelvin scale in a second. Okay. Let's also talk about room temperature because that's a pretty common thing. So just turn off the heat, no more ice, let it go to room temperature, put the thermometer in there, and it goes up to this medium level. And um, that's around 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. There's not a point here. There's a point here and a point here, but room temperature is kind of a range. I'm using the high end of the range because that's what's on the poster in the, in the classroom. And 25 degrees Celsius is about 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, that's called room temperature. Just to give you an idea of um, where these are, that's the main reason, reason we use Fahrenheit because I want you to, to understand the scale and you probably don't really feel um, Celsius. 100 degree day in Celsius is boiling, boiling hot. You would die. Um, 100 degrees Celsius, um, Fahrenheit day is hot, but you wouldn't die. Okay, so here's our two scales. And then what happened with Kelvin? So um, Kelvin was a scientist, of course, and he said, that, well, if, if this is molecular kinetic energy, he asked the question, if this is 100, it has more energy. Okay, makes sense. If this is um, freezing, it has less energy. Okay, that makes sense. But does it have no energy? Because the number zero makes you think none, no energy. No, and it, it, it absolutely, absolutely positively has energy. It's not zero energy. So then Kelvin said, this is the Kelvin scale. Then Kelvin, this is the K for Kelvin. And then Lord, and it was knighted, Lord Kelvin said, well, how far will it go down? Will it go down forever? And so he postulated that it would get to some bottom amount where the molecules actually would stop moving. They would stop vibrating. And so I'm going to put a little stop sign here. And so that bottom spot he called absolute zero. He said, this is absolutely the lowest temperature that you can actually get. This zero isn't absolute zero. This is just freezing. That's what Anders Celsius decided to do. But by my calculations of kinetic energy, um, I'm calculating that at this point, it would stop. So what he called this, he called this one zero, but he didn't use Celsius. He didn't use Fahrenheit. He made his own scale. He called it zero Kelvins. It doesn't have degrees. Be careful of that um, because it's an absolute scale. Um, it doesn't have degrees. Okay, then what he did was he said, okay, if I look over here, um, if I look over here, and I actually should have got rid of that 273 before because maybe it's confusing you. Um, you look over here, this thermometer would, would, would say negative 273, right? So using, what am I doing there? Using the Celsius scale, he said that would be all the way down to 273 before it stopped. That was his computations. And so he called that zero. So the negative 273, he called zero. That also happened to be a negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Right? So this is absolute zero. And But what did he do? He didn't make a new scale. He actually chose to use the Celsius scale. So how far is it? How far is it up? in Celsius from 273 to zero. Well, you're going to add 273 to get from 273 to zero, right? So then he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do, make the scale the same size. And so this 273 Kelvins, actually, let me back that out and use this, the, the same color scheme. This 273 Kelvins is the same thing here. I'm still going to go um, plus 273 so it's the same size scale and look at me I, I keep on making these small mistakes this should say 273 kelvins and I go back to a pencil okay so continuing on with that idea so my question to you is what is that gonna be in so this is like we get to a test and you have to fill in a table right so what is this going to be boiling gonna be well if you look over here between zero and in 100, there's 100, there's a 100 degree change in Celsius. He used the same scale as Celsius, so I've also got to add 100 here. It's the same size, and so 373 kelvins is boiling. Okay, so what you're going to be asked to do on the test is you're going to be asked to reconstruct this idea. And so if I go back to this, and I say, okay, what is what is this? Well, this is my scale right here. 
and um, you're going to ask to fill in a table just like this. So how do you do that? Well, you're going to want to start off with um, the the number zero for both of them. Where'd my, where'd my mouse go? <laughs> There's my mouse. Okay, you're going to want to start off with the, the number zero here. So this is where you start, the number zero right here. That's the freezing point of water in Celsius and the number zero here which is absolute zero in kelvins. And then what you do is you remember the number 273. And so if you fill out this box, right, this kind of locks the frame of the question in your head to where, and this is the idea that there is there is one, sorry, there is the same amount of degrees between zero and 273 here. And then these ones you simply have to memorize. The, um, the Fahrenheit ones, I'm sorry to say, you will simply have to memorize. But these ones are locked in. They're kind of like, um, I don't know, they're brothers or sisters in a certain way as far as like having the same size scale. Okay, so let's go back to the picture just for a second. So in the world of physics, don't use um, Fahrenheit for anything. Um, when we're talking about temperature, um, you could use degrees Celsius or you could use kelvins but you cannot use fahrenheit so you can't use degrees fahrenheit in the world of temperature sorry let me restate that in the world of changing temperature if the question asks you what's the temperature change you can use celsius or kelvin because the temperature change is the same there's exact same um, size of the unit um, but if you're using absolute temperature, if the question asks you what is the temperature, then you must use Kelvin's because Kelvin's has the zero in a different spot. You cannot use either degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit if it asks for temperature. You have to use Kelvin's. If it asks for change in temperature, no problem. Use Celsius or, or Kelvin's because they're the same thing. But if it asks you for absolute temperature, like what is the temperature, you have to use Kelvin's. Okay. Moving on to the next couple questions here. Um, the next question on the next page says, all right, come on, let's get out of here. If matter cannot contain heat, what is heat? What the heck does that even mean? If matter cannot contain heat, what is heat? Well, okay. So the, we don't call the energy inside of this pot heat. We actually call this heat. So heat is actually equal to a letter Q. It's not H. H is like height, right? So we got to use a letter Q. And heat is a letter Q, and that means um, heat flow. And so always use the term in your brain, if you want to remember, always use the term heat flow. It's the transfer of energy. So the fire is going to transfer Q into the pot. And so Q is the transfer of heat energy. And so um, that's what that question is asking. And so if we go back to that and just read that one more time, if matter cannot contain heat, what is heat? Heat is the flow of heat energy from one object to the next. Okay. What's the next question say? The next question says, what is thermal contact and what is the direction of heat flow? And so what I usually have, and as I, in, in the non-COVID time, I tell students, hey, everybody, person next to you, shake their hand, Okay. That's thermal contact, thermal contact, right? And, and I say, okay, when you're shaking that person's hand, does some person, does one of your hands feel warmer or colder? And almost always, someone will say, oh, your hands are warm, your hands are cold, right? That's thermal contact. The heat, Q, is the flow of energy. The heat, Q, is the flow of heat energy from one person's hand to the next, right? that are in thermal contact. So contact, thermal contact is when two items of different temperatures are touching each other and the flow is gonna go where? So the next question says, what is thermal contact? That's when two objects of different temperature are touching each other and what is the direction of heat flow? Okay, so it is always gonna go from the higher temperature and it's gonna drop like a waterfall down to the low temperature. So um, let's talk for a second about what our feel, what we're feeling. So the person that is feeling cold is going to um, have something happen to them that's it's different than the person that's feeling hot. Okay, so let's say I um, um, am really hot and I walk outside, 
right? So if, I, if I'm really hot and I walk outside, so this is me walking outside the door, what's going to happen is heat is going to leave me. And when the heat leaves your body, you feel cold, right? Now, what happens if I walk from an air-conditioned building, right, and then I walk outside and it's super hot outside, right? What's going to happen? Well, this time the heat is going to go on to me, right? And that's going to make me feel hot, right? And so what the people are feeling, actually, is the person who has cold hands is feeling the high heat from their neighbor go on to their hands, and so they're feeling hot. The person who has warm hands is feeling the energy leaving their hands, and so they're going to feel cold. And so the direction of heat flow is always from high to low. When it leaves you, you feel cold, and when it comes on to you, you feel hot. Okay, last question um, is, uh, no, I think it's the second last question. What does thermal equilibrium have to do with the previous concept of heat flow? Okay, so how long will it go? Like, if you, I, I actually like what tell students do this. I keep holding your hands. Keep holding your hands until you don't feel anything anymore, right? And so what will happening is your hands will actually get to what's called thermal equilibrium. So how long will heat flow? How long will heat flow? Heat will flow until they become equal, and it will flow until you get to thermal equilibrium. And that makes sense, thermal equilibrium. So if I put two objects in thermal contact that are already at thermal equilibrium, the energy will just vibrate around. But it won't flow from one direction to the next because there's nowhere to go because it's the same temperature. And that's what thermal equilibrium is. Okay, now we get to the last question. And the last question says, um, what is, um, what is ma when matter contains heat, it has heat held within it, what is it called? So it's not called heat. Heat, remember, is the transfer of energy. So what's it called when matter contains heat? So I'm going to draw myself a little person like a gingerbread man, right? So here's the gingerbread man, right? And if I have heat inside me, it's not called Q. So what is it called? It's actually called U, right? And U is the measurement of the molecular kinetic energy on the inside of a substance. So the flat, faster these um, vibrate, the higher the temperature and the greater the internal energy would be. Internal energy is called U. In the way I remember it for internal energy is the energy inside of you right it's the energy inside of you and so what causes an increase in internal energy is the addition of q heat flow the heat q which in this case is a fire in this case is someone's hot hands or in this case it's a hot day outside that's the q which raises the internal energy inside of you which can therefore raise the temperature inside of you um, which is the average speed of the kinetic molecules inside. So internal energy is the energy inside of U, and it's written with the letter U. Q is the um, energy of heat flow, heat transfer. And then T isn't energy. T is actually temperature, but it's the measurement of the molecular kinetic energy. Okay, and so that actually should do it, and um, we can go ahead and um, get to the next exercise.